Well, I'm with Jade Zorab here at Amber Gaming, and uh, this is a company that I was trying to work it out with you that I hadn't heard much about, but then I've realised it's been the sort of um, off shot of another company that was very well known, still is very well known in the Isle of Man. Yes, that's right. And I'm just intrigued, and it's the first thing that people said to me is, how can you, and you look so young, and I know you, <laughs> you are, this is... A, this is outside the usual remit isn't it in e-gaming I mean, or is that too sexy seem to say that yeah sort of thing? well i think um amber gaming you know embraces diversity i think it's true of our workforce here so we have got a real mix of you know specialists who are different ages different genders who have completely different backgrounds and i think it's what makes us strong as a community you know um we we embrace different thoughts um and and it's our diversity that makes us stronger collectively as a group it is quite unique i think for a woman you know to be at the helm of of a business that services the gaming community um and we're really proud of that yeah i mean that's the thing i mean why shouldn't it be but that's just the way it is but i suppose these barriers and the, these glass ceilings are being broken all the time aren't they absolutely yeah that's 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 right good now tell me because I don't know exactly what you do, and I want to know what the state of the business is like on the island, or all that sort of stuff. Sure. You're here, and I know you've been actually recruiting, haven't you? We have been. So um, I've been with the business for five and a half years now, um, and Amber Gaming's been going uh, for 12 and a half years, servicing the gaming community. Um, so we are a gaming compliance division. That's effectively what we are. Uh, we service operators all around the world. So as much as our operational hub is here, uh, we've got an office out in Malta as well. And we do service the international gaming community. We are doing a huge recruitment drive. So we advertised for uh, 10 vacancies on the Isle of Man. We have found eight out of 10 of those people already, which is just really exciting. And that uh, recruitment drive has been as a result of all of the growth we've seen as a business, which is, you know, hugely exciting. So explain, you know, you got Malta there and you work for other companies, do you think? So that's are you right. not yourself fronting things? You work with other people? Yes, that's absolutely right. So we are effectively a gaming compliance division. Yes. We service operators globally across what we call three key pillars of our business. Uh, one is consultancy, so we do gambling licensing consultancy in various jurisdictions. We do a lot of regulatory compliance consultancy um, across the tier one markets, which is um, you know, becoming increasingly onerous for operators. So we like to say we sit between sort of the regulator and helping to really disseminate, understand and, and apply the regulations in a pragmatic and solution orientated way. Uh, the second pillar is our managed services. Uh, so that is where we support the incorporation and management of licensed gaming businesses in the jurisdictions in which we're So you have the know-how. So. That's it. So right. we will um, provide, you know, um, on the Isle of Man, for example, companies, directors and, and compliance support and expertise to uh, gambling operators that want to establish themselves here. And then the other uh, pillar of our business is training. So we have developed a remote training um, platform. Uh, all the content on there uh, is written by our in-house experts. So it's uh, remote training, so delivered through our own proprietary mm -hmm. RP. And we work with uh, top tier gaming law firms and jurisdiction where we don't have the expertise to provide specific advice, like Sweden and Germany, to deliver that into the operators. So effectively, you know, closing that loop, making sure mm. the compliance ecosystem is complete and that um, staff within organisations are equipped with the tools that they need to keep operators safe and, and be able to understand uh, what they're supposed to be doing from a regulatory standpoint. Well, you mentioned you're doing well here. You got the Malta thing, clearly, was that a Brexit thing or have you always had that We've sort all, Well, we've had a presence one, in Malta for yeah. quite a long time, actually. Has it got more important because of Brexit? I mean, what uh, happened there? To, well, to some extent, yes. So we've seen a large, um, Malta certainly has seen a large influx of uh, gaming operators into the jurisdiction because of Brexit and for contingency purposes. But for us, um, it you know, is a key tier one gaming jurisdiction. It is a place that we've been providing European consultancy to for a considerable time. And um, we had a real demand from our client base actually to um, you know, obtain a license in Malta and actually offer the full uh, suite of corporate services there. Um, because they were so familiar with the level of service that we provided um, and wanted to maintain everything within the Amber Gaming ecosystem, which, you know, was a, a really big kudos to us. So how's the other man doing? I mean, this is the, the crunch question for people watching it here. Yeah. I mean, we survived Brexit and 
you're, you're employing more, but I've, I've always heard rumours that people have upped and gone. Uh, little new companies are coming in, but yeah. you know, tell me, what state of play are we in, do you think? So the Isle of Man has seen an amazing growth and an amazing surge in last ah. applications recently. So the Gambling Supervision Commission recently published that they had seen, I think, about a 30% increase in license applications. They are incredibly busy. We have supported a lot of that. Um, so we have seen... Um, different types of operators come to the Isle of Man for different reasons, some leaving jurisdictions um, because of complexities there or a lack of operational support in other instances. Um, and the Isle of Man is viewed very much as a, a pragmatic um, jurisdiction in which to operate. Um, it's obviously got a fantastic track record and being a stable and secure jurisdiction with um, reliable you know, third parties who can provide hosting that is reliable, um, banking partners who are happy to support the industry. Mm. And, um, you know, like I said, we are seeing a big increase in interest here. So um, a lot of what we're doing currently is servicing Isle of Man operators, be that software operators, um, operators who are going for, for agri licenses to do B2B or B2C activity. And so um, really positive for the Isle of Man. We've also seen interest from gaming operators who want to relocate personnel here which is fantastic. Some of those plans have been delayed, of course, because of COVID, but um, on the whole, very positive news indeed for the island. And you say you found eight out of 10. So is there a school shortage almost then at the minute here? Um, I think, no, we found the eight out of 10 really quickly, in <laughs> fact. Yeah, but there's last two. Yeah, Where are those? So, <laughs> so the last two we're still looking for. We are going through second rounds of interviews, so okay. hopefully we'll secure them soon enough. But we have mm -hmm. been delighted at the response we've had. I think, um, it's fair to say, you know, in some sectors we do battle, you know, with skill shortage on the Isle of Man. We've had, um, you know, we spoke about diversity when we started. We've had a real diverse bag of applicants um, with different backgrounds. And for us, it's so important to find um, the right sort of people who obviously have got a great skill set, but also embrace, you know, our, our culture, if you like. Um, and... And we've managed to find people who are very well experienced to join our team, which is fantastic news. How did you do in lockdown? Yeah. <laughs> like everybody else, I mean, you know, was it in a challenging moment or two? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think we are a business that is centred around people. We often travel to see our clients. Um, as a team, we work together really closely. And we are really fortunate that, you know, we've got technology that allows us to speak every day. So we made a concerted effort, effort as a business to... Um, speak to the teams on a regular basis. Um, given that it was our, our third lockdown, certainly in the Isle of Man, that was really challenging. We've got colleagues who are located in Malta in the UK, and obviously, you know, they are in quite different situations there as well. Um, but I think overall, we are a digital business. Um, we service operators around the world who operate digitally, and some have battled more than others, depending on, you know, the nature of the, the provision that they provided. Um, but, you know, a year ago we launched our Amber Gaming brand and we made a, a conscious decision to do that whilst in lockdown because we didn't want to see lockdown as a barrier to what we did. Mm. Uh, we've continued to grow, which we are really grateful for over COVID. And we've seen operators do some really interesting things. So to use the time wisely to plan strategically um, about the direction at which they want to take their business. We've been fortunate enough to advise, you know, a lot of, of the operators looking to domicile themselves here and elsewhere on um, complex structuring arrangements um, to make sure that they're licensed appropriately in those jurisdictions and give them the advice that they need. Um, things like ICE, they, they, they've they all been off, haven't they, for, with all the COVID? They have been. It, so the ICE is the big thing, isn't it, for e-gamers? Is that yes. it coming back on again and other things you know, like it? I'm really interested to see what will happen to the conference calendar because... I don't think that it will be the same as it's, you know, been ah, in the past. You mean less jetting around? I think so. I think travel will probably be far more considered. Um, I think conferences are probably unlikely to be at the scale they potentially mm. have been before. Um, so I think we'll just have to see what the future holds. A lot of the conference organisers have done their utmost to arrange virtual conferences, which um, I think, you know, some have, have gone better than others. Uh, some of them are really insightful where they've been kind of keynote speakers uh, to learn from. But I think you've not had the same opportunity to network and collaborate um, with the, the industry. The drink at the bar at the end well, of the day. Yeah, and that's really important. It is, you know, it's about yeah. forming relationships. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's been somewhat lost. And hopefully come to next year, 
those conferences will pick up again, but I do think that they will not be to the same scale potentially they've been before. And I think some of the operators who have spent perhaps significant sums of money previously on stands and exhibitions probably will, will look at their budgets more carefully and what they've managed to achieve without them and, and consider the best way to do that business going okay. forward. Uh, finally, how would you place the Alaman then if you were giving it a, a rating of you know, how well are we doing as a jurisdiction for your business and other people in, in your line of business? Yeah, so I think fantastically, like I said, we have an excellent relationship with the GSC. They are hugely pragmatic. Um, the Isle of Man is, is very welcoming of business um, and we've had a lot of support from the likes of DFE, which has been wonderful um, to see. So I think on the whole, you know, as a, a tier one gaming jurisdiction, very well. Um, so it is a finicky business. I mean, you, you know, people can pick up their computers and things yeah. and shove them somewhere down somewhere else, can't they? <laughs> yes, that's right. So it's, I mean, <laughs> that's so technical. Yeah, actually. I know, I know. Stable, <laughs> stable jurisdiction, you know, really secure right. and, and serves a purpose, absolutely. So, um, you know, really warm and welcoming regulator and, and the operators that have come to the Isle of Man have been, you know, very happy to be here. And you spoke earlier about some operators up and going. Yes, I mean, that's, I think, the nature of doing business in, in any industry. But we've also seen operators come to the Isle of Man. So GameSys is one of them. You know, they've got a headquarters here now and an office here, um, which is all really exciting. So um, I think each gaming jurisdiction has something unique to offer. The Isle of Man as a tier one regulator is really well positioned and um, given the continued growth we are seeing, I think stands itself in good stead for the future.